Or working with young minds, new athletes, young guys. One of the things that I think is really important to understand, at least for me, is being able to isolate and identify what it is that makes the blueprint, you think, for a really good athlete, not just a good athlete, but a successful person. And I think the idea of aiming to do the best good leads me to think about entertaining the thoughts of what would help not only an athlete become a better athlete, yeah. but how does he also become a better person? Yes. What are those for your Kai Green, a.k.a. Mr. Gideon Dunn? Now, we've gotten a chance to start this thing a little bit earlier in a much, much different way. Now, of course, you see us now. We're doing a little bit of cardio. It's a little bit after 12 o'clock in the morning. We've been flying. We've been working. We're still in the midst of traveling because there's a lot to do. But in this time, we happen to have had a moment of opportunity, rare opportunity, and I wanted to take this time and share this opportunity with you. I'm going to introduce you to a special person. In fact, I want him to take a minute and tell you a little bit about what he is doing because he's truly developed himself into an influence that is doing a lot and is giving a lot and has just begun to scratch the surface with the greater good that he has to give. So, I'm going to take a minute, we're going to turn this camera just to my left, to my left, to my left. Alan Cabarini. Kai, thanks for the nice, kind words. Oh. <laughs> it means the world to hear that coming from you. You know, Kai Green's the person we look up to. He's one of my personal heroes, especially being a diehard bodybuilder. So, just a little bit about my story. So, I used to live in New York. I used to be a banker. Humdrum job, as Kai says. Um, I was good at what I did. I kind of liked it, but it was what we were expected to do. My father, you know, banker, followed in his footsteps. But I've always been a bodybuilder since I was seven years old, and I actually got it from my, my father, because um, he used to read all the old Flex Muscle and Fitness magazines from the 80s. Used to watch the Arnold movies, Commando, and what not, so. Who didn't? Yeah, who didn't? <laughs> so, I used to cut bodybuilders, Mike Maturato, rest in peace, guys like that, I used to put my head on their bodies. Oh, wow. And just imagine that was what I'd look like someday. So, I'm a diehard uh, bodybuilder, that's kind of the thing that I've been always passionate about. I competed one time only, but mainly I just bodybuild because I just love to do it. Um, so anyways, after the banking thing, I'm originally from Jordan, um, I was born in the U.S., um, so I left New York to Jordan and came back after being away for, I was in military school and then I went to college in the States and then I worked at the bank for 10 years, so I was away for 20 something years. And so, uh, I started, uh, thinking, imagining, and strategizing about an idea. And that idea is Cab's Fit Factory. And Cab's comes from a name, my sister made that actually a nickname when she used to be, she was in the US Coast Guard. And all her stuff, all her clothes, you had to label everything, so Cab's. And then I started using it on everything. Friends started calling me Cab's, military school Cab's. So CABS is kind of the abbreviation of our last name, Cabariti. So, so CABS Hood Factory, we wanted to try, you know, I wanted to kind of get my passion out, uh, turn it into a business, make a business that was sustainable, and through it be able to also support, influence, and uh, empower people. So CABS Hood Factory came about. It was me and my first uh, 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 co-founder uh, started with me. Her name was Reem. You actually met her in Feeble at one point. Um, first year we were planning. Um, anyways, started planning and we were just two people out of coffee shops and whatnot. And uh, just morphed the idea. First it was getting a supplement brand, two supplement brands, a bu bunch of supplement brands, um, 
Then I wanted to have a gym facility. I wanted to have a bunch of everything that had to do with with our industry, mm -hmm. and not just bodybuilding, all the you know, fitness, health, and wellness. Uh, we even Panata, you see that machine, piece of machine Panata. there. Yep. So we're the distributors for Panata as well. And they've been around for a long time. Yeah, they've been for. They used to even sponsor the Mr. Olympia. That's right. They sponsored right. Buffarino back That's in the right. day. Yeah. Sports. Yes. So. I went to Rudy Panata to his house and I just saw the history of bodybuilding. He has magazines from black and white, 1900s, <laughs> stacks. <laughs> anyway, so Castro Factory was born, um, like I said, it was just two of us out of coffee shops and then we have a 7,000 square foot, uh, seven or 8,000 square foot store and we, we don't call it store, it's our showroom and supplements, the equipment. DNA, fit, uh, DNA is powered by Fit Factory. It's a, uh, a, a small boutique fitness uh, uh, studio, let's say. Um, we do personal training, nutrition advising, small uh, customized group classes. And basically, the theme of it is it's uh, exercise based on science. I'm not just saying this for the cameras. I'm not just saying this because I'm standing right next to you. I kind of am in, dis in, in disbelief that I'm at this point with Kai Green hanging out, but I used to look up to Kai Green. I applied a lot of things in my life based on watching Kai Green and his story. I mean, I would say you're one of the first also bodybuilders, um, and I really think you're revolutionary with this, but you had a story, and honestly, it wasn't a scripted story, let's say. Maybe, maybe it was partially, but I mean, I felt, and many others felt, the story of your life. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Four, let's go. Seven, 
Boom, six. Boom, seven. Boom, let's go. to get a chance to see some, some of the most amazing um, training sessions with women, women pro bodybuilders that have just, just really gotten a chance, just, just really just like blown my mind. You know, um, um, got to send a special shout out to Iris Kyle, because you are a beast. You know, oh, yeah. Diana could do, uh, Terminator, I see you. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. So anyway, I, I remember while watching uh, this um, awesome female pro bodybuilder years ago as a teenager. Yeah, because she was a lot older than me, and you know you were. <laughs> uh, but um, she had like some of the most amazing chest development, and I remember her movements were always just amazing to watch. The most mechanically sound, the most beautifully executed. She moved like a like a like a technician, um, and incredibly strong, you know? Um, long story short, she used to do guillotines, and after watching her do them, I swear I've always been a strong opponent of, of guillotines added in my training, whether it's a warm-up or a full-on chest training segment. Um, I just cannot emphasize enough how valuable uh, a guillotine is on the flat bench, and technically even with you know, a lot of my upper, upper chest movements on an incline. Or even on a decline angle. Yeah. <laughs> Ask him more questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's like. Sorry, I was He's smart, he's smart, let's rock. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, huh? 12. The secret is, the secret is my thoughts are powerful. My thoughts become things. It's how I think that makes my chest grow. I was about to pass out half an hour ago. You <laughs> pass that point, it feels good now. Let's get it. Thanks, my man. Ooh. Let's get it. Oh. Two. One, uh -huh. Two. Two. Three, uh huh. Four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. All right, twenty, fifteen, twelve, twenty, fifteen, twelve. You start with the rear delts, and the thing is, we wanna, we don't wanna make traps work more than they need to. We want to try to isolate these rear dogs. Now I know we're going to try to keep this in 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So we want to put some blood in our rear dog, the lateral and front. And finish with a shoulder press. Hammer. <laughs> yes! I like it! Rear dogs, let's rock. One, yep. Two, let's rock. Three, up. Four, let's rock. Five, up. Six, 15, 16, 17, 18. Good? All right. One, let's go. Two, uh -huh. Three, let's go. Four, uh -huh. Groove, ride right it through. Turn my knee up, flex my groove, ride right it through. Turn my knee up, flex my groove, ride right it through. 40 minutes to an hour every morning. Level five. Anyway, fast forward. I remember how much I looked up to Ronnie Coleman. I watched all the videos, Battle for the Olympia. This guy was amazing, unstoppable. 
squatting 800 pounds two weeks out from the Olympia. Everybody wanted to be Ronnie Coleman. Anybody that was expecting to see their dream realized as being the best of the best had to look at the best. And when Ronnie was the best, we had to challenge yourself. Imagine, can I do that? And if you didn't, if you couldn't say yes, when you asked yourself that question, then what also came along with that is, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna reach a little deeper and be willing to work a little harder. Everybody that was serious about this thing was challenging themselves using that as the example. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because fast forward, I remember later on, was starting to see myself step up, doing better in competition, starting to get to some of the things that I really wanted to do. Those guys that had the sponsorships, I went and hunted them down. We were hunting. When people turned around and called me the predator, I thought that they were trying to give me a backhanded compliment. They thought that they were trying to make fun of the fact that they didn't find me physically attractive. But at the same time, they also had to understand that whether they liked what I looked like or not, I came here to collect the trophy. I was coming here to cut down the other athletes that were there in front of me. My sword was sharp and I saw myself as just a competitor and I wanted to win. Nice. How was your workout? Uh, like that. Uh, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. We started at like 12 or something. Yeah. 12, 11.45. So, yeah, I don't feel my hands, I don't feel my shoulders, but I feel amazing. Seriously, halfway through, my blood sugar felt like it was going down, about to pass out. But the man motivates, the man inspires. He gave me a boost, feels good, awesome, incredible. I'll train another three hours with Kai. <laughs> yeah, 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 Tracy Paper could Tracy. be, could be um, you know, and, and, and literally, they're, they're drawing. Yes, yeah. This is this is not like a, you know, computer right, right. computer generated, that is, yeah. you know. You could tell. To just trace over a photograph of Frank Zane executing in front of a bicep or a rear of a bicep or, you know, it wouldn't be enough, you wouldn't be, there's not enough information, even on a most extremely conditioned athlete, like Frank Zane had to have been at the time that the actual photo was taken, there's still not enough surface sure. information to inform, you know, the this details. kind of detail. So the person that was had doing to get this, it from yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some yeah, yeah, yeah. anatomy. Yeah, exactly, they have to be aware of, of anatomy, like really well studied, it's not like, Oh, well, I can see it from the surface, and okay, so I imagine this is where it starts and this yeah, is where it ends, and that's it. You, 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 you just you wouldn't be able to see this. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to identify this like this. You know.